Uh, very nice, Gabby. Uh, did you think in exploiting the pro-angiogenic uh, potential of galactin-1 for treating um, um, ischemic heart disease? Okay, uh, so we now have uh, two different platforms. One is the oncology platforms with the antibodies to block galactin-1 expression and to increase immune response and reduce angiogenesis. The second one is the super GAL one with the autoimmune diseases to suppress inflammation. And we have one story that we published uh, in three years ago showing that galactin-1 also promotes angiogenesis and suppresses inflammation during myocardial infarction. Uh, so it's possible to use, uh, we don't have it as a formulation in the patent, but it's possible to, to do this using the super GAL-1 antibodies. We should check which of the three super GAL-1 antibodies, uh, super GAL-1 proteins uh, do this effect. Do you're making GAL1 blocking antibodies with uh, monoclonals or something? And are these going to being used in the clinic yet, or you will wait for that, or what? <laughs> Thank you, Eddie. Uh, in fact, those that I showed, uh, we have three different uh, monoclonal antibodies that we generated in the lab. Two are mouse antibodies that we are going to humanize, and one was generated by face display and are completely fully human antibodies that we generated single chain for we want to combine with the anti-BGF and to combine with the anti-PD-1. So the first will be to try to rescue uh, those tumors that are resistant to anti-BGF or anti-PD-1 and then to try to explore the double effects of collecting one, so the antibodies, so blocking angiogenesis and also increases the immune response. To follow up, one thing I didn't understand, you have the PD-1, I understand, it suppresses the immune reaction. But where does galactin come in? It's just in the vascular side or does it collaborate with the PD-1? This is a very good question. Uh, in fact, there are two sides of galactin-1. Galactin-1 can bind to CD45 phosphatase on T cells, activates the phosphatase activity and inhibits T cell activity. Different from PD-1 because PD-1 interacts with pd one and this interaction generates an activation of another phosphatase, SHP2. But on the other hand, galactin-1 binds to endothelial cells and triggers for phosphorylation of BGF receptor 2. So there are two functions in one protein. So galactin-1, promotes angiogenesis through binding to BGF receptor 2 and also promotes immunosuppression through binding to CD45. So there is, there is no crosstalk between these two cascades, PD-1, pd one and galactin-1, CD45, but there can be a synergy in the effects. Yeah, you can, you the president, uh, you can ask one more. <laughs> and then there is this thing of a revolution that all these companies are going to these chimeric T cells with immunotherapy. Maybe you could tell us in one, a couple of sentences, what is this? Because yes, there's well, a lot of money in this. <laughs> yes, when we speak about the revolution of immunotherapy, it's not only the anti-checkpoint, therapy, which is the anti-PD-1 and anti-CTLA-4, they are immunostimulators, but also, as you said, the chimeric antigen receptors. In the chimeric antigen receptors, you take out T cells from the patients and you transduce these T cells from the patients with lentiviral or retroviral vectors, including a TCR that is specific for one major protein of the tumors. For example, CD, CD19 of leukemia cells, and also MAC1 in the case of pancreatic cells. So in these cases, uh, you expand these cells that you transduced in vivo, and then you uh, inoculate and administer to the patients. You inject again to the patients. So this is, uh, has dramatic uh, success and results in uh, leukemia in leukemia patients and very recently last week it was accepted by uh, the Food and Drug Administration for lymphoma patients for adult lymphoma patients and now they are working for glioblastoma and for pancreatic cancer
Last question. I think we need to qualify those dramatic uh, successes. What's the percentage of uh, patients that actually respond? Well, and it depends. Those, uh, no, those responders, how many have to stop treatment because of severe side effects? Yes. If you look well, at each of those combinations. Yes, in, the, in this case, uh, this, this is a good question because there is uh, a, a debate whether they are dramatic or not. So in the case of checkpoints, there are some tumors where we can speak about the dramatic success, like Hodgkin lymphoma. In Hodgkin lymphoma, uh, checkpoint inhibitors lead to 95% of patients that are benefited by the therapy. In the case of melanoma tumors, lung cancer tumors, we can speak about 25%, 30% with progression-free survival. In the case of uh, CAR T cells, we must be a little bit more cautious because it depends on the leukemia or the lymphoma. But uh, in those, what, what is really dramatic, that, that, that's why I like to say the word dramatic, is that those patients that are benefited from the therapy, this benefit is durable during the disease. So the 30% of the patients that got benefit from anti-PD-1 or anti-CTLA-4 antibody, they got rid of the tumor for many, many years. So the question is why 70% of the tumors uh, of the patients do not do get not. benefit from this treatment. And do we have, do we have any idea? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, in fact, what, what immunology says, what people, clinicians says, and, and, and what uh, we believe also in the case of collecting one, that it's related to different biomarkers. So first, people and some companies try to find a kit for analyzing PDLA1 expression, so the, the expression of the checkpoint. So in some cases, like, like, like lung tumors, there is a correlation. But in other cases, there is no correlation between the expression of the biomarker and the survival and progression-free survival in the patients that receive the treatment. Uh, but what, what recently found is that the, the amounts of, uh, and the number of exhausted T cells that can be measured by the expression of TIN3 and CD8 positive T cells, the ratio in the tumor can give you an idea whether a patient will respond to the treatment or not. Thank you.